The coronavirus emergency and the epidemic of unemployment have made it much more difficult for people to get food. For relief agencies such as Project Red, that means new challenges for providing supply and access, but also to fundraising. To tell us about those efforts is the organization's president, Erin McAleer. Thank you very much for being with us, Erin. Thank you, Chris, for having me on. Erin, I want to start with, with, with the index of need that, that you're probably very familiar with right now, starting with just people calling for help. What has happened? Yeah, our food source hotline is serving as the central hub for people who are looking to access food resources. We're sharing with them the hours and availability of food pantries, school meal sites, and also doing applications for SNAP, which is formerly food stamps. We've seen a quadruple increase in calls over the past four weeks. Um, the first week it was about double, then it was triple, we're at quadruple. Now we're wondering, is that trend, are we going to keep seeing that trend increase? Are we plateauing? I think more likely than not, it's going to continue to increase in the coming weeks. Now, obviously the numbers are changing, but what about what you're hearing, almost the tone of these calls to help? Do you notice anything different? Yeah, people are in crisis. People are really scared. They're not just scared about how to feed their family today, which is a, a real crisis, but what's gonna be happening? Like how long is this gonna go on for? Um, how do they feed themselves and their family for the days and the weeks to come? We're certainly hearing from new callers, um, you know, folks in the restaurant industry, the service industry that, um, you know, never had to worry about uh, food resources before. Um, and they're calling to understand what programs are available to them. So people are scared, everyone is scared, um, but people specifically who can't meet their most basic need, which is food, um, are really, you know, in crisis. One of the things that you shared on your posting is a chart of uh, demand for SNAP benefits in Massachusetts. And it, it's amazing how much those have spiked. And that chart only goes up through the end of March, doesn't it? Right, yeah. And we are, Project Bread specifically is focusing on the federal nutrition programs as core to this whole strategy. That means school meals, SNAP, and WIC. And that's because they are the only programs that can meet the scale of this crisis. A lot of folks are turning to food pantries right now and food pantries are doing God's work. They're doing everything they can to feed people. They just can't meet this demand. So what Project Bread is trying to do is take everyone who's in line there that would be eligible for another program and get them enrolled in that program and, and leave the food pantries for the people that really there's no other program available to them. Now, I, I know you're more of a wholesaler than a re retailer in, in this distribution here, but uh, what about getting food to people safely? Don't you have to do things differently now? Absolutely. I mean, the whole anti-hunger space was really, uh, you know, our model was not for a public health crisis like a pandemic. Um, schools, as an example, are one of the most critical anti-hunger programs in our country, and school cafeterias is where kids were normally served. So we've had to change operations. Um, so today we've got school buses driving around Massachusetts, dropping off school meals to kids. Um, that certainly never would have happened pre-COVID-19. So we're all thinking through different strategies. Um, you know, for those folks that are on SNAP and WIC, um, we really relax the requirements so a family member can go grocery shopping for them. They can grab the, the card and go to the grocery store. So really thinking through how can people rely on their neighbors, um, their support system to get groceries? How can we do it as, as uh, safe as possible? And while we have figured out delivery models for school sites for some, I think it's the demand for delivery is much higher than the capacity. So we specifically are trying to triage um, who are the individuals who are homebound, elderly or uh, immunocompromised that absolutely need home delivery versus the people who, you know, we all would like it. I don't think there's anyone right now who wouldn't love home delivery, but the demand is much more um, than the supply. And so we have to really think, how do we get it to the folks that absolutely cannot leave their homes right now? Another uh, category, uh, immigrants, even people with legal status who are eligible for SNAP even, uh, right. I think they might be reluctant to take advantage of that. How do you overcome that barrier? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that frankly keeps me up the most at night. I think the inequities, I know the inequities that were built in this system before COVID-19 are absolutely exasperated. We, our office is in East Boston, which is a high immigrant population, and we've been looking at food insecurity there for a long time. And those are the individuals that we're worried about. So while um, you know we can work with them to apply for different programs, and Project Bread's a nonprofit, we're, we're not a government agency, so it's confidential. Nobody needs to, uh, we won't be reporting anything around their immigration, so we encourage them to call us. We know there's a chilling effect 
Um, and unfortunately, the Trump administration has not has not relaxed on some of their immigration policies. And so people are still scared. Um, and we really hope that the federal government recognizes that this is a nationwide crisis. This is all of us. We are all part of this community. And we need to also make sure our, our neighbors who are in need, who are immigrants, are also being, their most basic need is met as well. Chris, uh, with food programs, one of, one of the benefits has always been to the producers of food. But given so much demand right now, do you have enough? Do you have to go back to Washington or the state to get more support? So food is actually, is not, um, the, the food supply is strong. Certainly there's certain foods that um, are in higher demand. And, you know, press is reported even just today that uh, there are some places in our country that have an oversupply of food. So it's the actual supply of food is, is not the issue. It's how people can access it. And that's why Project Bread is really focused on the federal nutrition programs. We're focused on, um, you know, SNAP and WIC get people the purchasing power to just go straight to the grocery stores. The grocery stores are operational. There's 8,000 across the country that accept SNAP. Um, it's not a new system we need to build overnight. So let's get people signed up and able to purchase food um, at the grocery store as the most direct way of, of feeding families. I, I wanna ask you about the WIC program, Women, Infants, and Children. Uh, this has been around for a long time, but there are a lot of people who need this now who, who maybe never thought about it before. Right. So what should they be doing if they might need it? Yeah, I mean, we've um, reach out to Project Red. We can refer individuals to local WIC providers um, that can help get signed up. WIC, like SNAP and like School Meals, has really relaxed a lot of the requirements. It used to be that you'd have to do an in-person interview, and, and certainly that's not happening right now. So it's a lot easier to get signed up for the program, which I think is important to know. But if you're pregnant or you have young children under the age of five, if you're worried about affording formula, um, and feeding your baby, WIC is, is an important program and, and we need to get as many people who are eligible for it signed up. And of course, uh, you have a lot of people uh, desperate for food relief right now who were making good money uh, until about a month ago. Right. So if their tax returns look pretty robust, uh, you know, the fact that they're unemployed right now, I guess that's enough to qualify them maybe. It is, yeah, we're looking at their most recent payroll, right? And so if they don't have a recent pay stub because they've been out of work, that that will qualify them. So for SNAP, it's it's we we're everyone is pretty much in an emergency. So it's emergency SNAP right now. Nobody has to do interviews. Um, and certainly we still need to see income verification, but that's where Project Red can really step in and help individuals um, pull together the necessary paperwork to to get get this program. I want to ask you about the walk for hunger. It's hard to imagine a month of May in Boston without seeing all those people starting down Commonwealth Avenue in the back yeah. bay. We're not going to see that this year. So how are you going to raise funds? Yeah, so uh, yeah, the physical event in itself is canceled. Um, well, our most loyal walkers are still raising money. So we've changed our fundraising platform to COVID-19 response. Um, and our walkers who do it every year are still reaching out to their friends and their family to, to support Project Red. Um, certainly, we're not going to raise the $2 million that uh, we had planned to. There's, there's no question about that. Um, so we're really looking at other funding sources, looking for individuals who have never donated to Project Red to consider supporting our work right now. Um, foundations have certainly stepped up and supported our work as well. But yeah, there's no question. We are responding to a quadruple increase in demand um, and all while recognizing that our major fundraising event has been canceled. We should finally mention if, if people do want to help out with the fundraising or if they need relief and they have some questions, uh, what's the best way to follow up on that? Yeah, so for um, if you want to help out with fundraising, you know, go to projectbread.org. Um, that is the best place to sign up for the Walk for Hunger and, and to get involved. If you need help, um, certainly you can go to projectbread.org, but also encourage folks to call Project Red's Food Source Hotline. Um, the number is, I'm looking at it right now just to make sure, I should know it because I say it all day long, but the Food Source Hotline is available in 160 languages, and we've also got a, a line for the hearing impaired. The number is 1-800-645-8333.